set Harmus and Yas as rivals, seize land and grant such privileges. You should grant monarch point privileges, loyalty privileges, don't forget about expansionist zealotry, it's really important here, and grant local residents to scholar. Choose Jafari school. Don't grant increased levies. Invite Jafari Scholar and start building free company in this province. Move your 6k stack here and on the day one start improving relations with Ottoman. Check military advisors for the morale advisor. He isn't necessary but it would be better if you can hire him. When the marks are ready, hire one general and make ruler your general. Complete these two missions. Now basically you have plus 15 morale and maybe even 25 if you could hire military advisor. You should stack wipe Ormus army on the first day. Assign the general with siege pep, if you have him, to your mark stack and the other one to your professional army. If neither of them or both of them have siege pips, then assign the strongest one to your professional army. Also check Armus allies, because it may sometime ally Mamluks, and in this case you need to restart. Declare on the Armus on the 11th of December, and set Mascat as your goal. Usually Armus army is located in one of these three provinces. If you don't see them, then wait until they get from Armus to here. Wait until the lock appears and move your troops. If they have the usual general, like the one star one, then I guarantee that you will be able to stack five them. Build three infantry units. You'll need them to siege musket. While they are in progress, hunt the remaining army of Armus and their allies. Your main goal is to finish the remaining units. You shouldn't let them recover. Start sieging musket whenever you can. From the Armus ally, take money, and if you want, you can vassalize them. After you've sieged down entire Armus, you just need to wait until their enthusiasm becomes low. I don't know what has gone wrong here, but usually they agree to your peace at this stage. So consider this as the worst case scenario. I have managed to bait them out, and now I can kill their army to lower their war enthusiasm. You can fully annex them and take their money. You should be able to pay out most of your loans, if not all. And even if you don't, they're really really small. Finish this mission. Here comes the not so fun part of this campaign. Your neighbor timurids are your worst headache, not only because they have the rest of your capital state, but also because they really love to ally small nations around you. And your goal is to get rid of them as soon as possible. Also, after you've improved relations with Ottomans, you can ally them, to do it royal merit them, set Mamluks as threatened, and also you can scornfully insult them. Of course, they may not ally you right away, but they'll do eventually. Also in 1.33, Hassa builds castle in Katif, and it makes their capital fort third level, so consider that before attacking them. I think in my case it's better to attack the Vasir first, because Yemen is really good vessel. But every game is different, so you need to check neighbors alliances and decide for yourself. You should easily beat Arabian nations if you snipe their smaller stacks. So I'll make Yemen my vessel. In my case I can't conquer Mara without conquering Baluchistan, so I'll start preparing. Also you can take strong duchies if you want to. Baluchistan hasn't allied steam raids, so I think I'll attack them. But I need to warn you that it's not very pleasant to wage war against more than two nations, cause you'll need to waste most of your manpower on sieges. I'll start by blocking Baluchistan access to my lands with galleys, and also I'll eliminate Yas and Mara early. I really don't like sieges without cannons, so I'll just take this island and some money. Now most of my army is free and... and I can siege Yas. Thankfully this is over and now I can focus on Baluchistan. I think it would be easier just to build transports. I don't know what happened, but apparently Timurids gave military access to Baluchistan again. Baluchistan may be allied to Timurids, and in such case you have two options. First is to go for its allies, declare on them, and set Baluchistan as non belligerent Then you can break its alliance with Timurids. And the other way is just to expand south until you're ready to face Timurids. It doesn't matter if you expand the south, or east, what matters is that you need to get rid of Timurids. This number exists only on paper, because unloyal vessels won't get involved at all. They won't even send their army to help Timurids. So you may forget about this co-belligerents, and the screen would look like this. Timurids may ally some Indian power, but not always. If they don't, you can beat them by yourself, because of your military bonuses. But if they do, or you just don't want to risk, you can expand to Africa for these gold mines. Maybe you can ally Ottomans to get rid of Mamluks. Or you can find powerful allies like Delhi, John Poor, Bahmanis, maybe Ajam. The last option is that you can support independent of their vessels, but in such case you won't be co-belligerent and it means that you can't take as much land. By the way, I just found a really strange bug that for some reason I can hire two free companies. I think I'm ready to attack. I think that's enough of a war score, because I'm tired of sieges. So, how your peace deal with Timurids should look like? First, I recommend to take these two provinces, and also it's really important to do something with Afghanistan. You should either set it free, or just conquer it, or maybe transfer it to yourself. 
you just need to make sure that you conquer it eventually. But Afghanistan isn't that important if you have already conquered Balochistan. Let me explain why I think that these provinces are important. I quite like Ormuz, so I think it will be perfect capital. But there is one catch. State in which it's located includes Mogostan and Jask. And that means that if I set Ormuz as capital, I can't use this action. And yes, it's really good, so it will be pretty bad idea to ignore it. And for Afghanistan, so I want the culture shift to Iranian culture, to farm models. Paluchi culture is pretty good candidate, but it only has 47 development. It's more difficult to culture shift the Afghani, but it has 86 development, so in the long run it would be better. So you can choose what culture you want. After you've caught your newly conquered provinces, you should state them. Now open ledger and find paragraph charts in economy, and check the percent of Afghan culture. If it's less than 50, then you need to either develop Afghan provinces or to unstate state with other cultures. So after you increased Afghan culture to 50%, open this tab, promote Afghan culture and cultural shift. That's it, now you can form Mughal Empire. Now you may restate everything if you want to. And of course I'll move my capital to Ormuz. I need to mention that for some reason people like to make mascot their capital. I don't know why, but I think Ormuz is just better because it's a lot cheaper to develop. To develop renaissance, pass this edict, invite minorities from abroad and replace resident scholar with Maliki school if it still exists. So now it's really cheap to develop Ormus, and you can spawn Renaissance easily. Of course choose religious as your first idea. It's up to you what to do now. You can either expand to India, to Africa, or maybe you want to conquer Egypt with the help of Akamans. I think India is the best choice here, because you can form Mughals if you find powerful allies. Thank you for watching, I hope you liked this guide. Like and subscribe to my channel if you liked it.